We remain on Colorado 96 all day today, passing through tiny towns like Sugar City, Arlington, and Haswell, none of which show having services before we arrive in Eads or Sheridan Lake, depending on our level of ambition. The beautiful checkerboard patterns of the landscape indicate that today's ride will pass through many farms. Much of eastern Colorado is considered Great Plains, which is a grassland prairie ecosystem that stretches from northern Canada to southern Texas. It's not what comes to mind when thinking about the state of Colorado. Good morning, it's Friday, June 14, day 30. We departed our hotel in Ordway, which did not have an air conditioning strong enough to fight the heat. So sleeping on top of the sheets and covers all night. Um, wanted to be on the road by 5 a.m. Was on the road by 5.37 a.m. I thought I'd be awake earlier, but I wasn't. But that's okay. We have a headwind all day today. Gonna hit Eads in 61 miles and Sheridan Lake 21 miles past that is our final goal. We could stop at Eads, but I wanna press on to Sheridan Lake. That's the plan. When the sun peaks over that cloud, it'll be a sad moment. It means I'll have to put on my hat, sunscreen, sunglasses. Yesterday's average pace at the end of the day was 16.2 miles per hour, if I'm remembering correctly. And today, eight miles in, we're also on flat ground. But with the headwind, our average pace is 11.1 .1 miles per hour. Over the course of 88 miles, that is gonna result in like hours, hours of extra time on the bike to reach the destination. I wish we had the headwind yesterday on the shorter day and not today on this longer day. But it's what to, what's to be expected in Eastern Colorado and Kansas. Last few miles have been around eight miles per hour now with the headwind increasing a little bit. So doing some strategic thinking and planning and I opened up that Epic Ride Weather app to see what tomorrow's wind was going to be like. Well, tomorrow is about a three quarter tailwind. We're going east, but the wind's coming from the southwest. And so, little conversation with Paul, I said, I think it might be prudent to stop in Eads after 61 miles and not do the additional uh, 27, which would leave a longer day tomorrow, an 80 mile day tomorrow, but we'd have uh, partial tailwinds instead of full headwinds today. That's the plan right now. We'll see how things, how things go and how we feel in Eads. When you're looking for shade and a place to stop in eastern Colorado, don't hold your breath. <laughs> Where is there shade? Nowhere. There is a cemetery 5.8 miles away. Maybe I'll sit under the shade of a gravestone. Just an exciting round of how far away is the grain elevator. A fun game you too can play in a car or on a bicycle. There was a grain elevator and I said, Paul, how far away do you think that is? He guessed three quarters of a mile, I guessed a mile and a half. He edged me out. The grain elevator was actually 1.1 miles away. So it was by a small margin, but Paul won round one. We'll get to play this game a lot going through Eastern Colorado and Kansas. No seats out here, but we got a truck bed that we might be sitting on enjoying a snack. 
the snacks have survived. The crescent rolls are almost gone. I am eating the last couple bites of the cookie. We still have some scotcheroos. Paul got us some V8s, which are great cold, they're great warm, and they're okay room temperature. <laughs> eating food out of a tin on the back of a flatbed truck on the side of the road. Wow. This is what I thought this summer would be like. The flies are attracted to my saddlebags. We just met a westbounder Trans Am rider who started last year in May and he ended his trip early after a dog attack outside of Berea, Kentucky that left him unconscious and needing a hip replacement and was it a broken collarbone or something. So he uh, started again this year and is continuing the, the trek westbound. Nice guy from Rochester, New York. I didn't say that. His name is David. Good luck to him on his way to Astoria, Oregon. We just met a westbounder Trans Am rider who started last year in May and he ended his trip early after a dog attack outside of Berea, Kentucky that left him unconscious and needing a hip replacement and was it a broken collarbone or something. So he uh, started again this year and is continuing the, the trek westbound. Nice guy from Rochester, New York. I didn't say that. His name is David. Good luck to him on his way to Astoria, Oregon. Haswell, Colorado is home to the smallest jail in the country. It's 12 by 14 feet. Intel named their 2013 processor architecture after Haswell, Colorado. Congratulations, world's smallest. You did it. Haswell, Colorado. Go west to east, they said. The prevailing winds uh, are west to east. That has not been our experience, but we have had tailwinds. They have been so slight, like we're staring at the grass to see, is it even slightly bending in the direction we're going? You know, and barely feel it um, as we're riding. But when there are headwinds, these things are fierce. The grasses look like they're gonna get torn out of the ground. Shingles look like they're gonna fall off of, of roofs. Trees look like they're gonna be uprooted. Birds literally are flying in our direction, standing still in midair because they can't gain enough speed to overcome the wind. Like, when we have headwinds, that's what they're like, and that's what they're like today. Ugh. We want water, but no one's home. Eads, Colorado has a population of 672. Despite its small size, it was the first high school in the state to provide notebook computers to all of its students. This is my first IC in, I think, over 15 years. I think the last time I had one was when 7-Eleven was doing some promotion. We lived in Cincinnati, Ohio, and they were doing like, you know, 19 cent ICs. And I got one back then and I thought, oh, there's so much sugar. But now there's so much sugar and I don't care. I need it. And it's so cold and refreshing. Oh, so a little stop in Eads. Uh, but uh, it looks like now with this one wind, we might be pressing on the initial 27 miles.
decision has been made. We are pressing on the additional 27 miles to Sheridan Lake. Strong, strong whipping crosswind. You gotta yell to have a conversation. Welcome to the Sheridan Lake Bible Church. There is my bicycle and there is a sign on the door with some instructions for bikers. One of which is don't bring your bikes in, but they did because there was a storm. And there is this beautiful, enormous kitchen with food in several pantries that we have access to. And this great room over here for sleeping. We are here with a Dutch cycle tourist named Colin, and then me and Paul. I'm gonna set up shop somewhere. That's Paul over there. And we have a bathroom we can use over here on the left. This is outstanding, and I hope all the churches along the Transamerica Trail are like this, because we got it good. Thank you.